Continuing our discussion on nullification, making it very practical. Do what you don't want to do. Serve God how you find difficult, how you find burdensome, how you're not interested. And when you do what you don't want to do, it's not about you. It's all about God, nullification. And the more nullification, the more God's blessings and presence and salvation is showering your life. And what happens when it doesn't work out the way you need it to work out? So when it doesn't work out the way I need it, so when it I mean, doesn't, doesn't want it to be that way. But. So again, yeah, it depends on, is it a, is a question of maybe it didn't work out now, but it's working out tomorrow or it's working out next week. I could say, yeah, but I needed this like months ago. So why is God slapping? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Sometimes it's literally a matter of timing. You know, it's just like if you have a, a house on the market. Okay, and you want to sell it already. You have to move on. You have to continue whatever your life is. And you, de- and instead of taking a week, it's taking months and months and months. But in the end, when you sell it, maybe it's like, oh, I got a far better price. Or, oh, maybe this is a very beautiful family that I'd like to continue staying in my house. That's versus maybe some of the other people that came and went that I didn't have any special feeling that I'd want my house to be their house. You know what I'm saying? I'm just making up something here. But like timing, sometimes, we want it and it's good and we're sure therefore God wants it too, but it's not the right timing for it. Maybe I'm not in the right space now, the right space to appreciate it, the right space to utilize it. Think of a, a shidduch, you know, <laughs> where there's a, a girl or a boy who's waiting to get married. Well, maybe where they're holding now, though, of course, they're mature and ready, but they're not really. And when they do get engaged at that point, they actually really are ready. They've actually really changed or opened up inside in a way that their marriage is going to be better than if they got engaged six months prior or a year prior, which was already so late. But though they were ready, they weren't really ready. Now they're ready. So many, 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 many things is timing. Many things is timing. And something's good, and for sure God wants it, it's going to be. It's going to be in the right timing. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. So then when it comes to the timing, part of nullification is nullifying the timing we want it to be. Absolutely. That's hard. It is. Yeah. Would you please it's give practical nice. tips on how to do that? Because there are, I, I know there's certain things where I feel like I wanted this a year ago. I wanted this a year and a half ago. I want this now. I want it to have already been. And, and it's so hard. And every time I dive in, yes, and the eternal nudge saying, yep, I'm the nudge again, here I am. I'm still asking. I've been wanting and wanting and wanting, and I only want it for your sake, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But obviously it wasn't the right timing yet. How do I nullify my timing in a practical way, or my sense of timing in a practical way? I think it's the same issue of the entire nullification. Meaning there's a dichotomy or a duality here. And I, I, I like the way Elisa put it. Hi God, your nudge is back. <laughs> And of course, Hashem wants us to be the nudge. Hashem wants us to keep knocking on his door. And at the same time, he wants us to trust him and say, we know you're taking good care of me. So Jews are schizophrenic. You know, we we straddle two worlds. I mean, we straddle, of course, the physical world and the spiritual world. So also here, we're straddling two worlds. On one hand, we are banging and banging and banging on God's door. And he wants us to do that. We're banging with charity, we're banging with Tehillim, we're banging with Hachlatos, with Kabbalos, with Tfilos. We're adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and banging and banging on his door. And at the same time, we're saying, God, everything that you're doing, you're doing perfectly. You're doing with love. And I know it's going to happen. I'm human. I wanted it many yesterdays ago, but I know it's going to happen. And I know when it happens, it's exactly the best time for it to happen. The best time for it to happen. And I think, you know, you're asking for practical tips. I think the best practical thing is for you to remember a personal situation in your own life where you saw it, where you saw God coming through exactly in his timing. And you realized how perfect that timing was. Or even if it's not an issue of timing, just you saw how you you saw how doing it God's way really was the right way. And it really did work. 
And even in the times when it looked like God wasn't there for you, he really was there for you. And when you can hold that in your heart, as you're banging and waiting and banging and waiting, you're banging, you're waiting, and you're saying, I trust. And I can trust easily because I remember this time, and 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 I remember this time. And I have so many times in my history when it didn't seem you were coming through for me and you so came through for me. I know this is gonna be exactly the same. I, I think that is the most practical tip because it's our own lives and we see it works. I can't think of a better term for it than that. It works. God works. He is truly there for us. And truly sometimes it seems like, wait, where are you? Oh my gosh, you were right here the whole time. You were taking such good care of me the whole time. And when we have those situations, I feel like you hold it in your heart for those situations where you can't see it. I, I can think of many in my own life, big things, little things, where I just so clearly saw God so coming through for me that when I'm in a situation where I'm still waiting and still knocking and still nudging, but I'm doing it with, with the big tool, with the nullification, with the calmness. Because I, I, I know God. He hasn't, he hasn't dumped me yet. I don't think he's dumping me this time. He hasn't forsaken me yet. I don't think he's forsaking me. Eliza? So when it comes to doing it in a calm way, like when I think automatically about the times that, that the Yeshua was so clear and in a way that I never would have dreamt, but it was more perfect than I ever could have dreamt. So there were times where I was, yes, I absolutely gave everything over because I, I had nothing left to do. But on the other hand, in all honesty, I, I can't, embarrassing as it is to say, I can't say that I, I felt that I was in this high level calm. You know, I, I don't think so. Um, it, it was more like surrender of, of there's just nothing left. No choice. <laughs> right, there was, yeah, exactly. No choice whatsoever. I took this hachlata, Rosh Hashanah, um, and you're supposed to take on a few Hachlatas Rosh Hashanahs. This was one of mine, one of my New Year's resolutions. I said, I, I, I can't say I've, you know, it's been about a month. I, I don't, I, I've probably passed some and failed some in the month. But I said, instead of stress, I'm choosing trust. And just to go for trust, not stress. So yeah, we're human. And sometimes we can do it. And sometimes we can do it gracefully and beautifully. And sometimes we fall on our face and then we pick ourselves up and try a little harder or we realize we failed, but don't worry, the situation's still continuing. We have new opportunities to pass. Yeah, it's, 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 we're human, you know? Succeed, fail, move a little forward, <laughs> flip a little back. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's the story of all of our lives. We, we understand that process. And I always remind God that he made us very human in case he forgets, you know? He made me human, so I'm living up to it. You know, sometimes I do better. Sometimes I don't do as well. But yes, try to hold in your heart all the times that God came through for you. And in that space of feeling God's love and care and compassion, nullify yourself. Find the trust, find the big tool, find the nullification, find the space of God. This is your world and you know what you're doing. You're doing good and you love us. And I know you're gonna come through for us. And maybe that calmness is gonna last for a half an hour. And maybe it's going to last for three days and maybe you're not going to feel it then, but maybe the next day you're going to try and you will. So it's a process and we keep working on that process. But that to me is, I think, the easiest way for me to feel that calmness and nullification and trust is just to see all the ways God has done it for me in the past. And the more and the more and the more I remember God coming through, the easier it is to nullify myself and know it's happening now as well. Maybe not in my time frame. Not the way I would look at the ticking clock, but you know what? There's a reason I'm not God, you know. And in but but I but I know he is, and I know he knows what he's doing. And it, and there's a and perhaps what he's waiting for is my real nullification in general, because you know, Yael jumped us to a pretty high level. For so well, I mean, I was responding to your comment. You went very high in nullification. You can you can there's. You know, like you jump to the top of the ladder. There's many, there's many rungs on that ladder of nullification. And something that maybe sounds more practical and more doable and is 100% nullification 
is putting aside your will for God's will. Every time you do a mitzvah, every time you do a mitzvah, you don't want to do. And obviously there's mitzvahs we love and there's mitzvahs we're okay with. And there's mitzvahs that are very challenging to us and we find difficult. And especially now, obviously, even if it's a mitzvah, you're t let, let's say you love hosting and having guests and beautiful. Well, it's also an act of nullification because God wants you to do it. It's even more an act of nullification, something you don't love, but let's say neutral, like mezuzahs. On your own, you wouldn't view it as like a new interior decorating twist to have these, you know, nice artistic boxes on your door frames. It doesn't bother you. I mean, you, 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 you're you an Orthodox Jew in an Orthodox Jewish neighborhood, you know, you're not suffering for it. You have no problem with it. It's not, it's not something you say, I love it. And it's, it's just, it's there. It's also this nullification because it's only because it's God's will, it's there. But then imagine a mitzvah that is really difficult for you. Like many women find various aspects of modesty really difficult. Many women find not gossiping really difficult. Many people find honesty really difficult. So if it's really difficult to be honest or really difficult to be modest or really difficult to dive it or re really difficult to be a positive, happy person. If you find these things really difficult, wow. Perfect built-in opportunities of nullifying yourself to God all day long. You know, angels constantly are nullifying themselves to God. They constantly are nullifying themselves to God. But a man can do something an angel can't because a man can sacrifice his will to God. Meaning an angel's will is serving God. But sometimes mine is not. I have many wants. I have many things I can sacrifice to God by negating myself to him. Every choice I make where I put my will aside for his, creates the most powerful force drawing God into my life. Every act of nullification, bring God inside of you. So if you can think of something that you know that God wants and that you find challenging, you don't have to be such a great philosopher. You don't have to, this is it. This is nullification. Every commandment is an act of nullification. This is your will. And this is now my will. There's a incident that happened with a third Lubavitcher rabbi that's Samuel Tzedek, that someone came to him and he complained. He said, what am I supposed to do? I don't like to learn. I don't like to learn, Tyra. I don't like to learn. And the Samuel Tzedek responded. The third Lubavitcher was referred to as the Samuel Tzedek by his work of many volumes called Samuel Tzedek. And he responded, wow, you're so fortunate. You're so blessed. What can I do that I love to learn? He wasn't being sarcastic. He wasn't trying to make a joke. He meant it as a very serious, true fact. You don't like to learn? Wow, you're so blessed. Because every time you learn, imagine that nullification to God. Imagine what's going on now. But me, never. I happen to love learning. So my learning is a nullification. My learning is what I want to do. Of course, we would rather love to learn and learn. <laughs> then have to fight ourselves because we don't want to do it. But it's a very beautiful turnaround perspective when we look at those things that are difficult for us. And instead of saying, okay, God, I know you want this and it's really hard for me, but I'm trying, but I know you want it, but it's really hard for me. It'd be nice if things were easier. It's nice if I enjoyed more doing some of these things. What a turnaround perspective to say, amazing. Look at these built-in opportunities I have to be so close to God. Look at these built-in opportunities I have to be so nullified to God, to give to God. When things are easy, it's not as powerful. Things are hard, things are challenging, I don't want to do it. Amazing, wow, look at my opportunities here. So it's, it's we all have so much be tool, so much ability to bring God in because we said that there's nothing that's more of a magnet for God's presence than nullifying yourselves to him. There's nothing that works better. There's nothing that brings more salvation than our nullification. 
there is a, a, a maybe it's a story. I mean, there's many such similar stories that happen with Lubavitcher Rebbe of a, whatever. I'll say it very, very briefly. A very, very wealthy man in California who had an only child who was in an accident, deathly ill, and he heard about the Rebbe, flew to New York on his private jet, and basically asked the Rebbe to save his child and offer an enormous sum of money for charity. And the Rebbe like, ignored it. He offered more money, more money. And the Rebbe kept saying, you need to close your business on Shabbos. You need to keep Shabbos. You need to close your business on Shabbos. And the man, the man wasn't religious at all. Like, that was the most preposterous thing in the world. He, he has all these businesses. There's no way he's closing them on Shabbos. He offered more money, he offered more money, and the Rebbe refused. The Rebbe wouldn't take any of his money. He left very, very frustrated. His child still, you know, in a very, very, very deathly situation. And after a week or two, very begrudgingly, he kept Shabbos. And there was an improvement in the child's condition. And the next week, he kept Shabbos more. And week by week, he more and more kept Shabbos. And the child completely. The person was offering the Rebbe millions of dollars. The person says, ah, don't give me your millions. Keep Shabbos. Now, obviously, I mean, who are we to say? You know, the Rebbe didn't afterwards give commentary on the story. But I, I think it's a big example here. Millions of dollars. That's a tremendous, tremendous merit. But they're saying, that's natural for you. You're very wealthy. And this is your only child. And you're offering lots of money. Nullify yourself to God. Do what you don't want to do. Do what you can't do. Do what you view as impossible. Keep Shabbos. That's going to create the blessing. And it did. Anyone